Hello. Before I introduce you to the vast array of beautiful ceramic clocks that have been made over the past few centuries, I want to talk about a technical detail that potters have to consider when they're making things like ceramic clock cases, where a hole has to be cut into the uh, clock case for the movement. We're talking about uh, clocks that are being made for the mantle or for the wall, essentially for telling the time in the house. Clock movements came about uh, early in the 18th century uh, and they were used, these uh, wind-up ones, the mechanical ones, were used right through till around about the 1940s when the uh, quartz movements operated with batteries were invented and the clocks from then on uh, used these kinds of movements essentially. Now the technical detail that I'm talking about is the shrinkage of clay. Clay shrinks from about 8 to 12 percent and this has to be considered when you're cutting a hole in some pottery for your clock movement. The potter will make a strip of clay, put a measurement on it and put it through all of the processes of the firing and uh, make another measurement when it's finished, and then he can accurately calculate the, the, the shrinkage of the clay. I have these two clock cases. This one is uh, an antique French clock case from the GN factory, about 1824, and this one I made myself. Uh, you might be able to see that I cut the hole too big there, and I had to pack up the hole so that the movement would fit it. Uh, on this the old French one, you can easily see where the potter has chipped away the hole so that the movement will fit in quite neatly. So now let's have a look at some of the beautiful and sometimes very intriguing ceramic clocks that have been made from reasonably early in the 18th century right through to the present day. The very first ceramic clock case to be made was this one. It was made in tin glazed earthenware or faience at the Strasbourg manufactory of Paul Hannon from about 1754. On the top is a figure of Old Father Time holding an hourglass, one method of measuring time long before clocks came onto the scene. The stunningly beautiful Meissen clock on the left and the clock from the English Chelsea factory are examples of lovely clock cases which were produced and in the later parts of the 18th century. And in total contrast are these beautiful Dutch Delftware style clocks which can probably be dated towards the end of the 18th century. Two have pendulums and striking mechanisms and you can tell this by the number of holes in the front of the clock movement. As we move into the 19th century, an extraordinary number of beautiful ceramic clocks were produced, such as these two from the Meissen factory in Germany. The English factories of Coalport and Colebrookdale produced these lovely clock cases. Two contrasting styles of porcelain clocks from the Sevres factory in Paris. And very classic style clocks from the Royal Vienna pottery in Austria. Two more French clocks, uh, from one from the Emile Gallet worked, the other from Aubert and Kleftenberger in Paris. Uh, the uh, influence of the Rococo style can be seen 
in many of the clocks from this period. These two are from the German Dresden factory and two more French clocks uh, in a classic style. And the clock on the right is the same clock case, but with an entirely different decoration. The English Wedgwood factory produced some fine ceramic clocks in the typical Jasperware style, as well as this one on the right with a transfer printed decoration. Here are two clocks from the French pottery Gien in the Loire Valley. And the one on the right is the same as mine, with a pink transfer printer design, and two more in contrasting shapes and styles. The English, European and US Majolica potteries produced many fascinating and colourful clocks in the latter part of the 19th century, and here are a few examples of these. And I repeat that the English definition of majolica means that the pottery has been decorated with coloured glazes. And from lesser known factories, a German clock and an English clock in what we call flow blue. Here is a French Delft style clock and a Russian blue and white clock. Both clocks are late 19th century. And the German clock on the right here uh, is in the style of Wedgwood Jasperware. These four clocks are in the tall grandfather clock style. The cute one on the right tells the story of the nursery rhyme, Hickory Dickory Dock, the mouse ran up the clock. Moving into the 20th century, we begin with these two Czechoslovakian clocks of totally different contrasting styles. A Royal Crown Derby clock from about 1960, and an earlier Art Nouveau clock by Arnhem in France of 1920. These two are in the style of Art Deco, but I don't think they were made in that period. Two very different clocks by the Royal Worcester Pottery Factory in England. Uh, a lovely clock by Royal Crown Derby in England. and two very different clocks from the Spanish Ladrón pottery. And two very cute and attractive little dolphin clocks. I just thought I would mention here that many potteries made garnishes of clock and candelabra or candlesticks or vases as in the case of this Art Deco garniture. These contemporary clocks are made to hang on the wall, and they all have a small hole in the middle and are fitted with a modern battery-operated clock movement. And here we see two fascinating ceramic variations on Salvador Dali's melting clock. And now the time is right to have a look at several delightful and very creative clocks 
that have been made by studio potters. Now let me show you some clocks that I made during my career as a practicing potter. The crab clock and a crab nuts and leaves green clock with a transparent green green glaze. A funky wall clock. The galah wall clock, once again with gum nuts and gum leaves. The Art Nouveau styled clock, I made two or three of those. Willy Wagtail has a pendulum. And the kangaroo clock on the left was sold to a collector in the United States. To conclude with, I thought I would show these pieces, although not actually clocks, but related to time insofar as that they were made in abundance in the latter part of the 19th and early 20th century as a stand for the all-important timepiece the pocket watch, so prevalent during these times. And as the old saying goes, time waits for no man. And so it's time for me to thank those who have contributed to the images that I've used in this video and also thank you for watching.